Hello again, my name is Ariel and this is my channel where we talk about herbal lore, herbal medicine, plant mythology, and anything that I'm remotely interested in in a given week. This week we are talking about seaweed, and seaweed sounds either delicious to you or absolutely revolting just depending on the culture you grew up in. If you are from a culture that lived by the sea, you probably have used seaweed in many different ways from cuisine to medicine to building things out of. We are gonna take a deep dive into seaweed today and its significance in mythology, which is my favorite, and some ways we can use it in skincare and medicine and kind of like beauty preparations. And so if you're a mermaid or a merman or a wannabe, definitely listen in on this one. Merman! We are gonna to go to a local beach. I live in the Pacific Northwest, and so there is lots of seaweed around here. We're gonna see what we can find and talk about how to identify certain types of seaweed and how to use them safely. Here we are at the beach. It is very oystery and rocky, not your typical smooth and sandy beach, so I am wearing shoes today. We are on the shores of the Hood Canal in Washington State. And fun fact, the Hood Canal is America's only fjord. Usually fjords are found in like Scandinavia but this is our little Scandinavian-like place in America. I'm scanning the beach for any signs of seaweed. The tide's a little higher than I would prefer. We're just gonna do the best with what we have, as we always do, and there we go, a little sea lettuce. Maybe it's not like the most appetizing looking thing in the world to you, but trust me, if you take this little bit of sea lettuce home, rinse it off a bit, chop it up finely and add it to some salad or like some sort of soy sauce based dressing situation, it will be umami and savory and delicious. Just look at that little guy. He looks kind of like a green sea cucumber, but it is a plant, I assure you. An algae to be specific, which I guess is not technically a plant, but I am rambling and we're going to move on. I actually put this little sea lettuce back in the water because there was only one of them and you know me i like to only harvest plants when there are many of them so while not every seaweed is edible all edible seaweeds contain very bioavailable sources of iodine and as you might know iodine is a very essential nutrient that is artificially added to our salts in the modern day because our soils don't have enough of it but that's a tangent i'm not going to go on Anyway, iodine is essential for healthy metabolic function because specifically iodine keeps your thyroid working properly. So the way that seaweed iodine works is that it is actually present in many forms in the seaweed. And so if we have like some sort of radioactive disaster, eating seaweed could potentially protect us from that sort of radiation, right? Because it's in many forms and so it's not as easily radioactivized. All right, I'm going to stop right there because I'm not a radiation scientist, but it has been proven scientifically that consumption of seaweed protected specifically the Japanese from getting cancer after the Fukushima disaster. I digress because we are about to stumble on the glorious rockweed seaweed. Like sea lettuce, bladder rack or rockweed is found throughout the world on many rocky shores in the northern hemisphere. Rockweed's name is Fucus in Latin, which is funny to me because I am a 12-year-old boy. This makes me also amused by the fact that those little poofy orange bits, the active part of the bladder rack or rockweed, are actually its sex organs. Hooray! And being that it is summertime, those organs are fully developed now and really ready for harvest. These little vesicles or poppers have a lot of healthy mucilage in them, which is soothing to the skin and digestive tract. They are a wonderful source of many minerals, including iodine that I'm so fond of. And it was actually one of the first kind of remedies for iodine deficiency back in the day. Because there is just so much of this rockweed seaweed, pounds and pounds and pounds in fact, I am comfortable taking a little handful home so that I can do some little skincare things with it. Because everyone loves a good face mask, right? And I will tell you how to do that. 
The thing about harvesting rockweed is that if you don't harvest it super fresh, I guess this applies to anything, it just starts to taste a little funky. So I have been doing several little taste tests of the poppers. They should taste kind of fresh and salty and not have any strong odor or flavor to them to be good. At the end of the day, like with everything, if it tastes good, then it's good quality. And a lot of this tasted kind of musty. I think it's because it's growing on old wood and exposed to the sun a lot. So I am gonna look kind of in the water itself for a better rockweed to harvest. Here I am blinding you with my very Irish legs. I tried so many of these and they all just tasted a little musty. And this is just your daily reminder that it's okay and good to be discerning in all things. If something's not quite right, you don't have to use it or ingest it or have it in your life. You can be a picky bee sometimes. And I finally found a bunch that tastes good. So I just kind of took it off. I should have left the little uh, bladder sack attachment to the wood. I should have left that and been a good environmental friend, but I did not. I wasn't thinking and I am sorry, seaweed. Leaving the little attachment that keeps them attached and afloat to whatever substrate they're on just helps the seaweed grow back and it's a nice thing to do, even if I didn't do it. Here's a handful that I took. I'm going to take it home and squish it up and put it on my face. You may notice other little bits of seaweed here, like small bits of sea lettuce. Not enough for me to harvest yet, but very beautiful all fanned out in the water like that. I don't remember the name of the green ribbon looking algae, but I know that our native seahorse, the pipefish, really likes to hide out in it. Oh, and here's a really cool one. This is actually nori. Not enough to harvest, but very epic, very cool. It is indeed the nori that we use to make sushi out of. It is kind of like dried in the sun and blackened that way. It's kind of more brownie black underwater. I've always wanted to make my own sushi nori, but I can never find enough to harvest and do that. I was about to pick this little patch of rockweed in the water until I saw a tiny crab on it. Can you see his little pinchers? Here's my personal favorite. This is called Turkish towel. In some sources, it is also called Turkish washcloth, and it's a slightly different species, but no matter, they are both classified as red algaes. They are edible, and they have these little texturized towel-like fuzzy bits on the surface of the algae. And this is just a baby one. As you can see, it is kind of brown and curly and crusty on a rock. And when it gets bigger, it will be more purpley, especially as it gets exposed to the sun. Turkish towel can be boiled down and used to make a thickening substance called agar or carrageenan, depending on how you make it. And this thickening substance is kind of like a seaweed jelly, and it can be used to make desserts out of, even ice cream, and to thicken soups and broths and all sorts of culinary preparations. Seaweed extracts are used in everything in lots of industries from biotech and tissue regeneration to cosmetics and food preservatives and even like things like modeling clay. It's crazy. Seaweed extracts are in freaking everything. This Turkish towel is just starting to establish its presence on this beach, so we're not going to take any today. My favorite way to use seaweed is in skincare preparations. There's two ways you can do this. The first way, which is my most commonly used way, is to take a little bladder rack, the little like orange poofy bit at the end, the poppers as we called them as kids, and actually open that like a little skincare capsule and take the clear jelly and put it on my face. This just helps smooth fine lines and wrinkles. It literally feeds and hydrates your skin and adds a little extra layer of protection against environmental toxins. And it's just the best skin food. It's free and it's, it's amazing. So if you have access to fresh bladder rack, I cannot recommend this method enough. You can also like put it in your bath and stuff, but you will smell like the ocean. So just like take that into consideration. I wanted to show you guys how I do the rockweed facial, but unfortunately, I lost the jar of seaweed. It's probably in my car, stinking it up somewhere. Oops. Another way is to make a preparation of seaweed. 
you can buy dried seaweed and make a tea and kind of use that as a facial on your skin, either using a sheet mask or like a damp towel with the seaweed tea on it. And again, it will smell like the ocean, but it will feed your skin like no other thing will. And you can also use that same kind of water preparation as a hair mask, just kind of spritzing it in your hair or soaking it in your hair. All of this will help feed your hair with important proteins and minerals that it needs to be healthy and shiny, which God knows I need because I keep bleaching the crap out of my hair. In the Greco-Roman mystical tradition, seaweed is associated with financial prosperity, summoning the four winds and creatures like mermaids and naiads, and the Greek goddess Amphitrite. Amphitrite was Poseidon's wife, or one of his wives, maybe his most important wife, and she wore a crown of seaweed. That was kind of her fashion symbol of the day, and she was actually King Triton's mom. So I guess technically she was my grandmother. Uh, regardless, seaweed has been an important part of the mythology and traditions of the Greco-Roman and especially Celtic traditions because of their proximity to the ocean. The legendary Tuatha de Danann people of the Celtic Isles have a, another sea goddess named Clydna. Clydna, the sea goddess, holds every ninth wave sacred and if you speak a wish onto a pearl, tie it up with seaweed, put it in two shells, and cast it on the ninth wave. You have to count every nine waves. I don't know how you do this, but you do. Then the goddess Cleithna will hear your wish and grant it. In Scotland, there's a legendary creature called the Kelpie. Now, Kelpie is not named after seaweed. It actually comes from the name of the Celtic word for horse, but Kelties often appear as seaweed-covered horses in the water trying to lure humans to their death in the water and eat them or something. Being a shape-shifting skinwalker type monster, the Loch Ness Monster is actually said to be a Kelpie, and the only way that you can control a Kelpie and ride it, a la Frozen 2, is to use a magical bridle on it. And once you put the bridle on the Kelpie, then you can ride and control the horse without it killing and eating you. Moral of the story, if you see a friendly looking beautiful horse around or in the water, tread very carefully and maybe don't get too close. Alright guys, thank you for making it to the end of yet another video. I appreciate you all so much. I'm actually super close to 100 subscribers, so definitely share this video to help me get all the way there and more. And next week I will be doing another video. I don't know what on. Let me know what kind of content you like. Alright. I love you lots. Bye.